This is Ron Guitardi, Volunteer Director of the Oral History Program aboard the Battleship New Jersey. Today we are aboard the Battleship New Jersey, and today is Thursday, June the 29th, 2017. And we're here to talk with Armando Robles, uh, who was on the uh, Battleship New Jersey in its last commissioning in, in the 1980s. Good afternoon, uh, Armando. Armando. Good afternoon, Ron. Armando, why don't you start by uh, telling us uh, how old were you when you got into the Navy? I was just discussing that this morning. I was 20. You were 20. 1982. 1982. How old are you now, if you don't mind? I'll be 55 in September. Okay. And 20 is a little late for most uh, in <laughs> inductees. Uh, did you enlist? Or were you drafted? Uh, no, I, I enlisted. You enlisted? Yeah, I enlisted. Okay. Why at 20? Were you busy doing something else? I was doing school, working actually, and then uh, I kind of interesting story of why, why I decided to join the military. Uh, one of the things that, uh, as a young person, I wanted to get into acting. I wanted to get into showbiz. Bob Hope was an idol of mine. He still is. I know he's gone, but and uh, I just watched all his USO shows. Uh, and uh, this particular one was a uh, program that was on television called uh, Hollywood Goes to War. And of course, Bob Hope was pretty much centerpiece of all that with all his entertainment and everything. And uh, I just thought that would be so cool, you know. It's, it's a way to see celebrities, you know. Like, join, I'll see Bob Hope. <laughs> Even at 20, I was that naive. So it was, uh, it was that and just direction, you know, something to do. Uh, another thing was a wrong phone number to my house. Someone had called and asked for Armando, and I said, this is Armando, and then he asked if I had been interested in re-enlisting in the military. I said, well, I've never been in the military. He says, oh, okay, well, wrong number, I'm up. And then he called back, he says, well, are you interested in joining the military? I said, not particularly, you know, I don't uh, have any desire or even thought about it. So <clears throat> from his phone call, then the Hollywood goes to war, then Bob Hope and all that. And I thought, ah, this, this will be my chance, you know. Get out of Phoenix and go see the world and everything else. Sounded so, like destiny. Right? <laughs> it was destiny, Ron. It was it was exciting, interesting, and and you know, true to form, I, I got to meet Bob Hope on board the oh, USS New Jersey. You really did. I really did. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, so where did you go to boot camp? I was in boot camp in San Diego. San Diego. Yeah, San Diego and boot camp. And you were from Tucson, you said? Or, originally from Phoenix. I I live in Tucson. Been there for the past three years. Uh, but I'm originally from Phoenix, Arizona. Tell us about boot camp. Anything memorable there, either good or bad? Uh, it was different. I'd, I'd never, I'd never been out of Phoenix, so I'd ne I've never seen the ocean. I've never seen water, you know, much less ships. You know, um, boot camp was strenuous. I was a heavy kid when I went in, and I was unrecognizable when I came out. You know, um, so it, it was uh, something that transformed me. It, it, it provided discipline and um, just uh, what it did for my life at that early stage was, was incredible and it's stayed with me since. All right, so how did you get assigned? To, were you assigned immediately to the New Jersey? I was right out of boot camp when they announced the assignments and then they announced, they mentioned my name and then they said Battleship New Jersey and everyone just kind of, wow, you're, you're going to be on the battleship and I'm thinking, well, Again, I'm not, I don't have too much knowledge of ships. I think, well, aren't they all battleships? <laughs> you know, it's the Navy. Don't they all fight? But uh, it was, then when I got on board, I realized just you know, the awesomeness of it. And What was your impression when you first saw it? Well, it was in dry dock. So okay. it's like, what, this? You know? <laughs> but, it looks uh, even bigger in dry know, dock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, the depth and everything else and the height. And um, <clears throat> just, it was scaffolding everywhere. You know, scaffolding everywhere and uh, just construction, you know, just a big construction site. Did you go to any A schools uh, after basic training? Uh, actually, I did A school after my tour, after Beirut, when okay. I got out. I did, uh, I uh, studied for journalism, which I did on board. Uh, I passed, but I, you know, they, they weren't advancing if you're out at sea. 
you know, all, or testing rather, you have to do all that. Well, what was your rating when you first got a out of semen, basic? Of, uh, yeah, well, out of basic, yeah, semen recruit actually. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, finally, uh, with the journalism, went to, to um, pay off the third class, um, and that was my rating coming out of the Navy altogether. Coming out of the Navy. Right. Now, what did you do aboard the battleship before you got to, to A school? Uh, before on board the battleship, I worked in the weapons office. Yeah, I which was happens to be where we yeah. have our compartment. Is it right? Is that yeah. right? Yeah. We can go down there yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was on in the weapons office. I remember uh, we were at muster, and they needed someone to be acting yeoman in the weapons office, and they asked for volunteers. No one would raise their hand. So the chief said, uh, if no one raises their hand, I'm going to pick someone. So, of course, no one raised their hand, so he picked me, and I worked in there. And that was pretty much my time uh, while I was on board, is, uh, is working in the weapons office, the omen duties, pretty much. And then, of course, I'd, uh, I'd work with uh, my own division. In 6th Division, we do the usual uh, boats and mate items, you know. Um, like I said, coming did you, in. Did you have any particular skills that uh, lent itself to being a yeoman for the uh, weapons department? I Could you type, for example? I didn't. No, I didn't have any skills like that. You know, I mean, pretty much my work was all labor, you know, coming in. Uh, but I picked up. I mean, I did go to school before that, so I had, you know. Did you have some college before, right? You had not idea? before. Okay. No, no, not before. Everything happened after my, my time in the war. All right, and so how long was the ship still uh, being prepared for recommissioning when you were aboard? Uh, well, I, I came in in February. The ship was recommissioned in December. So I would give it maybe eight months, maybe, uh, yeah, six, six to eight months. And where were you berthed at the time that it was the ship? We were in Long Beach. In Long Beach? At the Long Beach Naval Station there. And, and where, where, where was your berth? Where were you... Uh, Burst yourself. Oh, on this on this deck actually in the in the uh, forward part of the ship. While they were still preparing the ship. Or oh no, while we were there, still while well, they were still preparing, we were on barges. On barges. Yeah, we were okay. on barges. I've yeah. heard that before. Yeah, we were all on barges, and we didn't come on board till at least maybe a month or so before, before. we were, pre were prepared to go out for our shakedown. Okay. And uh, do you remember what the commissioning date was, recommissioning date? I believe it was the 28th. Ronald Reagan was there, December okay. 28th. It was right after Christmas. And I remember Ronald Reagan was there. It was a, did a you big get, thing. Did you get close to him? No. <laughs> I was a parade rest way in the back. Uh, my, my family did. My, my parents were there. Uh, they all got to see him up close. And it was just, it was a day. I mean, being on board the ship and all the dignitaries that we had come on board, you know, again, for me and, and what I'd like about, you know, uh, just the famous with Bob Hope and everything else, I got to see that, you know, being on board the battleship was just the, 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 the creme de la creme, you know, it was awesome. Okay, tell us what uh, the, uh, un when she first left port on her, uh, left Long Beach. We left Long Beach for our shakedown, of course, you know, we need to get right. the, the kinks out of the what's going on and, and shoot those 16 shoot inch the guns, guns and everything bit. and they ripped the skirts to pieces you know it was just incredible it was just to, to feel this thing tip and back and everything else you had to hold on for dear life uh, otherwise you know uh, of course we had the warning with the salvo alarms and everything else so we knew what was coming um uh, were, were you on deck for the firing of the big guns? No, you had to stay inside. You had to go below decks for that. There was one time when we were off um, uh, Beirut, actually, when we started shooting there. Um, we, uh, a shipmate and I, we did sneak up topside. In fact, we did that when we arrived off of the coast of, of Lebanon there. And uh, it looked like the 4th of July with the fireworks or the rockets and everything going back and forth. But yeah, our initial going out after the commi the commissioning, you know, it was cameras everywhere, you know. At, at the time it was, uh, again, Ronald Reagan, so he was building it up, and this, the battleship was, was uh, understand, pretty controversial at the time, you know, because it's a battleship who's, who's recommissioning a battleship in 1982. You know, you're thinking more advanced, but we had uh, the capabilities to, 
move us forward. Okay, and uh, tell us what a day, a routine day was like uh, for you aboard the battleship. A routine day was, of course, muster, you know, up, up on with my division. Uh, then they'd do their work and I'd come down into the weapons office and do my work. Uh, work there with the commander. Um, uh, the other yeomans that were in there, you know, handling just administrative duties. Although if there was something to do like an underway replenishment or, or something that required bodies, then I was a part of that. Then I'd get back on board or... Were you assigned or did you volunteer? Um, <laughs> I was assigned. <laughs> <laughs> underway replenishments and uh, vert reps, vertical replenishments, all those things, you know, yeah, you have to be a part of that. Vertical um, is what, by helo? Yeah, by helo, where the supplies come in, okay. and then the underway replenishment is just moving alongside another ship. And What's ref that like? Tell refueling. us. That was scary at first. After doing it a few times, it's like, all right, let's get this thing over with, you know. And But at first, because it has to be so precise, you have to be at the same speed with the other ships, and it just has to be tight. Uh, and that was cool enough. I think what was nice is everyone would come off topside to take a look at the battleship, you know. So it's just major spoil being on the battleship, you know. It's like celebrity everywhere you go. <laughs> really nice. Uh, it sounds like you really enjoyed it. I did. I enjoyed it. And there, was, there were the times where it was lonely, you know, and yeah. that's where the, my moments in the, in the chapel come in. That's why I talked about wanting to see the multi-purpose room. I had, had a lot of... Um, the chapel was there at the time? The chapel was there at the time, yeah. Okay. And, and uh, uh, Father you know, Fitzgerald was Angelo on Angelo is, uh, is assisting. Angelo Pizzullo is assisting us today, and he's going to show you there okay. that uh, area b after the interview. Okay, and now, uh, what, what was your, where did you go first after your shakedown cruise was completed? It was a Westpac. We did the Western Pacific. We did Hawaii. We did Singapore, Thailand. Um, Philippines? Philippines. Did Subic Bay, and you know, of course, first time doing any of that was just an incredible stuff. Uh, what do you remember about Hawaii? Was that your, your first time in Hawaii? Th that was my first time in Hawaii. Uh, the beauty of it, the green, going out, the weather, uh, just being in Hawaii, you know, on this island, and, and of course, went to the, the new um, USS Arizona. You know, wanted to see the Arizona and pay respects there, um, but it was a lot of the times we stayed on board to give tours to uh, people. You know, because we would do that uh, oftentimes. Um, I bet you had a lot of people. Had a lot of people. Tours. Yeah, yeah. In fact, had memorable uh, encounter uh, when we were in San Francisco with a family that wanted to come on board, and they needed to have a ticket, and you know they didn't have a ticket, so. I was getting ready to go into town and, you know, have my, my fun out there and saw this family with their grandson and they asked, you know, if I would give a tour and he explained that he, he remembered the battleship back in the Korean War and he had his grandson with him and so I gave him a tour, I gave him a tour of the ship, you know, gave him a tour of the ship and then he gave me a ride into town, you know, to the Golden Gate Theater. I was going to go see Liza Minnelli that evening. And uh, it was, we had a good time. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> had a good time. It was fun. Okay. The, after, when did you end up in uh, Beirut? Off Beirut? Of Lebanon. Yeah, well, we were still on the Western Pacific tour there and then decided, not decided, but then said that we were heading to the Med, to the Mediterranean, so we went through the Panama Canal. What was that like? Awesome. I mean, we cracked it a few here and there. <laughs> they tried to elevate it as much as they could, you know, to get it through the locks. But you had the... It's a tight squeeze. Tight squeeze. You had the rocks, and they, they warned us. They said, you know, you just can't be there because the rocks are just going to shoot out. And they did. You could just hear them almost like a bullet, even. You know, the way they peened out of the, its place. But we went through, I don't know how many locks it was, more than two or three, I'm sure. I'm told they, they had to train fire hoses on the side of the ship. Also, so that doesn't... Uh, um, uh, Create the, sparks. Yeah, 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 exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah, that was... And, you know, we go through one lock and then coast through the water and then there's another lock and on and on until finally we, we got there and uh, headed towards the uh, Mediterranean. Okay, and where did you... What ports did you hit in the Mediterranean? Do you uh, we... we 
we got there in, in Beirut four days before my birthday, September 25th. Uh, and then uh, we were out there for months. You didn't make any stops on the way to the On the way there, no. No, no I don't, okay. not that I recall. Okay. Not that I recall. And even when we were there, there was a time where it's like we were there for, it had to have been about three months. And they said, well, you know, we're supposed to be coming in every 90 days or within 90 days. So we had uh, Alexandria that we were coming into, Alexandria, Egypt. And uh, so they said, okay, we're having a day of R&R &R here. You know, guys, go out and then, and then uh, we'll come back. I think we're going to be there for a day or so. So I had already had tickets to do the, the tours and everything else. I had duty the day we arrived in Alexandria, the, the day we got station, uh, the ride there. So I had duty, so I had to stay on board for watch. Everyone else went out. Everyone else went out. And a few hours later, there was an announcement, you know, a huge recall. Syrians started shooting aircraft, and they needed us back. They needed us back off the coast. So, you know, again, this huge recall that went on was incredible. Everybody was accounted for. Really? They got everyone back on board. That's surprising. It wasn't too hard to figure out where they'd be, you know. <laughs> but, they, you know, they all came back on board, and we were back on our way to... Uh, the 60 closest bars, is that what you <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. So we got back there, and... It was, uh, yeah, we just, and then we stayed. We stayed there continuously until, um, actually, we did head to uh, uh, Naples. Yeah, the Naples, um, and then uh, in Israel, off of Haifa in Israel. There, I remember that because um, I did the tourism thing in, in Israel, Jerusalem, Bethlehem, Nazareth, did that. Um, so you were there during the bombing of the marine barracks? I was there, yeah. In fact, I, I remember the announcement, you know, that there was a bombing and that Granada had just happened. So I thought, well, more Granada stuff. Um, but I remember because the PA was right above my, my bunk. And I just woke up to them announcing that uh, 23 or 20-something 20, 20 casualty. So it wasn't until I went, to, it was Sunday, I went to Mass and, and uh, asked one of my shipmates, says, well, what happened? And then he told me that they had bombed the barracks there, that the Marines were staying at. Uh, so then the numbers just kept escalating. <clears throat> the numbers just kept escalating. Uh, did you know Gorchinsky, the one guy who yeah, was? Yeah, journalist chief. Yeah. No, journalist chief, he was, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I remember him. And uh, I think. Um, he was killed in the Marine barracks. He explosion. was with the barracks, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I recall him. You weren't doing journalism work at that time, Not at were the you? time. I, uh, Malinowski was the chief when I studied for it. I didn't do any journalism on board. Uh, I was studying for it. I'd write stories like for the underway replenishments. They wanted to see what I knew about any writing, but uh, my journalism didn't happen until after my time, my three years reserve, which was after my active duty reserve, uh, work time. Okay, and uh, all right, so after the Marine barracks bombing, what happened then? It was just solemn, you know, it was, I remember it was solemn, and I remember that uh, we fired off a few in October, a few weeks after that time, but they did need volunteers to help recover the Marines, and I was, I volunteered to go ashore to do that, uh, but then our lieutenant, the division lieutenant, Lieutenant Diverti, he says, no, he says, I don't want any of the guys from the division going out there. I'll do it, you know. So he went out there as representative for the division. So rather than to take ten guys out of the division, he did it for everyone. So did, did uh, was that only officers went then? No, no, they had uh, he, guys yeah, there? with uh, you know, since he was our lieutenant for the division, he you know, pretty much his word was it. Yeah. If 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 the volunteers like myself weren't going, then that was that was his say. It was just whether or not we were going to go ashore to recover the uh, the Marines. And things were quiet aboard the ship for a while? Things were quiet aboard the ship, and then finally when we decided to shell, like I said, in somewhere in October, you know, then it was, the morale lifted, actually, you know. And uh, by that time, it's like, we're, let's do what we have to do. You know, let's do what we have to do. and. Uh, you know, that was before the major shelling, which was the next, the following year, in February. 
where we shot off. And you were still on board? I was still on board, yeah. In fact, I was a phone captain in one of the five-inch gun mounts for that. And uh, Which one? Uh, starboard side. I remember the, the second one. I don't remember the one. Second five-inch gun? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And there were several general quarters. You know, there were several drills that we went through and went through. And then finally, uh, when they announced standby for combat, and I realized this is it, guys. You know, this isn't this isn't a drill. You know, put the deck of cards away. You know, this is this is it. This is what we're doing now. And we went at it. You know, we went at it, far, firing the salvos and you know doing all the other. Uh, Do you remember how many uh, shells were fired at that? Initially, time? there wasn't much. There was, in October, there was only maybe less than twenty. But after that, there was at least over two hundred. You know, and it was just going and going. Um, it was it, it was an incredible thing. And again, that was after that was after the holiday. You know, but we we, we had taken uh, we had did the shelling there in October, and everyone kept saying, "Okay, well we're now we're going home." I said, "No, we're not going home. Not after doing this. We're gonna we're gonna be here a while." So then Thanksgiving came and went, and they said, "Well, we'll be home for Christmas." And this is where Bob Hope comes in. I said, well, we're not going to be home for Christmas. I said, we're, I'm, I'm going to write to the USO and ask them to ask Bob Hope to come entertain because that's what he does. And you know, at the time, he was no longer doing that. You know, I said, maybe he might make an exception for us. So when I was in Long Beach, I'd spend my time at the USO club in Hollywood. So I had their card. So I wrote to Bob Hope, care of the USO club in Hollywood. And then I got a letter back right before the holidays you know, care of uh, um, an admiral and said that he forwarded my letter to Bob Hope. And I said, okay, that's great. You know, and then I recall reading the Stars and Stripes about a week before the holiday that uh, it was in the Stars and Stripes paper that we would get on board other than the Jersey men and said that Bob Hope was coming to entertain the troops. <laughs> coming to the New Jersey. Coming to the New Jersey. He was coming to Beirut to, you know. The Do you Middle. think you did? You I did took that? credit for it, Ron. <laughs> Everyone patted my back and said, Robles, you, you did it. Look what happened. I'm like, I'm sure this is just Bob Hope doing it because he's Bob Hope. But I took the credit. Why not? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I got to meet him, his autograph, and all the, uh, you know, he brought Kathy Lee Crosby, Brooke Shields, Vic Damone, George Kirby, uh, uh, Julie, Julie Hayek. She was a Miss Universe at the time. Um, and uh, yeah, we Brooke Shields. I don't know if I mentioned her, but yeah, so br brought them all, you know, and came on board, and it was really neat to see that to live a, a, a dream. You know, one of the things that I've always wanted to see is. Bob did you get to shake Bob Hook's I hand? I did. Took his, you know, we took a photo together. He signed my book, the USO book that I had of his, uh, and then years later, uh, when I moved, when I got out, then I moved to L.A pursuing an acting career there. Then I, I met Ann Gillian, and I, you know, recalled with her when she came on board and entertained the troops. And she was really, really sweet, real, you know, gracious. And, you know, we just talked about that. And Did you get any special treatment from the crew or uh, the officers because you brought Bob Hope on board? <laughs> <laughs> no. no, are you kidding me? <laughs> it was great, though. The shipmates were awesome. We, you know, it was brotherhood all the way. Everyone uh, took care of each other, and and if there was ever you know some differences, then they'd have the Sunday afternoon match on the helo deck. You know, get the gloves on and let's let's take care of that frustration, and uh, you know make it okay without captain's mass having to get involved. <laughs> And w wasn't there a lottery for some people to go home about that time? There was. In fact, that was a part of that. <clears throat> they, they augmented us with the reservists. You know, they it was right before the holidays, over I think a month or two, uh, with uh, reservists coming on board to relieve some of us. And I was a part of that lottery. Uh, and luck would have it, the lottery I picked would, would have me home when they aired the Bob Hope segment of the USO. You know, so I was home to see that. <laughs> and so it's like, you had the whole family over at my brother's house. It's like, and, uh, you know, he was on How board. much leave did you get? How many weeks? What was it? A week or two, I think. I don't think it was more than two weeks. But, uh, yeah, yeah, they, they brought him on board. They brought the guys on board to relieve us. And yeah, that was much well, needed. Was that before or after the, that must have been after the Bob Hope show since you saw the show? Right, yeah, yeah when, for when, my lottery, yeah. When, uh, it was spread over a couple yes. of months. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you remember when Bob Hope was aboard, what month it was? 
Yeah. It was in December. December? Yeah, okay. it was in December. In fact, I think he was on board with us on Christmas Eve. You know, if I don't, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was Christmas Eve. Yeah, because I just thought, you know, talk about tight, you know, just right on time. <clears throat> you know, right on time with, with Christmas and everything else. I remember watching those Bob Hope shows. Yeah. And that Silent Night they sang used to get to I, everybody I just, every year. And Jillian sang Silent Night, and of course, you know, tears, you can help but just kind of shed a tear hearing that. And that's one of the things I thanked her for when I met her years later, or it probably wasn't even that long, um, a few months later after I cut out, you know, for singing Silent Night. And it just. Yeah, it was very emotional. memorable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. So you went home, then you came back aboard, and uh, yeah. life resumed. And then you had the uh, the big shelling uh, early the following year. Yeah. Then the then the big shelling. Uh, what year was this? Now February eighty four. Eighty four. Okay. I believe it was eighty four. It's like I said, about two hundred, close to three hundred shells. Heading out, you know, we had everything. We had the, you know, been on board with the uh, tomahawk, you know, shooting off the tomahawk and, and like not there, but testing it out. <clears throat> and um, yeah, we did the big shelling, and then we were finally able to come home. You know, they had to. I recall because we didn't know why we were there, what was going on, and we knew we were, you know, the Syrians and everything else. I recall a. Um, a meeting in the in the cafeteria on the Mestex to kind of give us a map of what our strategy is, why we're there, the history of what's going on, you know, because a lot of a lot of us didn't know what was going on there, and you know, the fighting in the Middle East, you know, uh, and it kind of gave us a better picture of what was happening and and why we were there, you know, protecting the Marines, of course, in our own interest. Uh, but yeah, once it was done, it was done. Then then uh, you know, coming back home. You know, that was it. And, and then coming back home to Long Beach was quite the memorable thing as well. Did you stop at any other ports on your way home? From, on the way the home, day? I don't recall stopping at any, at any other ports. I don't recall. Um, You'd been on station for a long yeah, time. By yeah, then. by that time, you know, I, I don't recall. I guess they took you straight home. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and, uh, and then we came home into going into Long Beach. And I was recounting this this morning, you know, once we got there in Long Beach and then the tugboats were tugging us in and um, there's everything going on, the media, the people out there on the deck and and the waters, you know, the shooting out, you know. The cannons, water cannons. Yeah, the water cannons from the tugboats and everything else. <clears throat> and then we finally moored into the area there um, and just hundreds of people out on the dock, you know, going on. and. We were all at parade rest. We had to be in our, in licking our best. <clears throat> and then finally, when they blew the whistle, that we were all okay. You were all in dress whites. All in dress whites at the mm -hmm. time, yeah. And then the, they did the whistle that we, you know, we were able to to leave. And so we scrambled about, and you know, it's just, it was it was chaos <laughs> with all the people. And I just recall looking out over the railings, looking for my family. You know, I figured they they're here. I know they're here. They said they'd be here. And uh, I couldn't, you know, see anyone. And then I heard this voice, you know, I heard this voice say "mijo," which means my son in Spanish. And it was my mother, you know. And she was like, I don't know how I heard her with all this music and everything else, but I did hear that voice. And you know, that was just you were tuned to her. Frequency. I was attuned to her. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Ron. I was. I always have been. Always will be. <laughs> and then, how long was your leave then? Um, Do you remember? I think I just had a few days, just and after that, days. then we could take our usual time. But it was maybe the weekend or something like that. And then when I finally uh, left, uh, February twenty second, um, was your the last day of duty aboard the right, New Jersey? On board the New Jersey. Yeah. And were you discharged? Today? I was. Yeah. Yeah. Honorably discharged, and and then uh, went to went with some shipmates. You know, I was supposed to take a flight out. Uh, home that night, but canceled the flight, spent it with the shipmates, you know, and we just, yes, Tom we just had uh, to the um, in New Jersey, our guest Tom Delushi, laying to the quarterback. <laughs> uh, so we spent, I spent the last day with my shipmates, you know, and uh, then, 
yeah, you know, tried to keep in touch writing, but that didn't really go, you know, you know a few times. But then we just kind of drifted apart. And then this happened. I always knew, you know, when the when it became a museum, I thought, well, one of the things I'd like to do is come back to the New Jersey, you know. Uh, how about the reunions? Did you attend any of the I didn't reunions? I didn't uh, attend any of the reunions. I read about them, but I never attended any of the reunions. Being in Arizona and, you know, it just... It's a long trip. Long trip, work, you know, mm -hmm. and doing other things. <clears throat> but I never attended the reunions. Um, so I had an opportunity to come in January to the East Coast, and I thought it would be nice to tour the ship. But I understand the ship is closed in January. So uh, Jason... Hall, you know, corresponded with me and said, well, we'll make arrangements, you know, what day would you like to do this? And we arranged for the date and Jason gave me the tour, you know, so he, we went around and uh, uh, we, he showed me everything, uh, except the multi-purpose room. I met, I remember pointing to it and then I thought later, why didn't I go inside? You know, I would have loved to have gone the inside. The all-purpose room? The, the multi-purpose room, yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything else, you know, my rack, my birthing area, Weapons office, uh, the mess decks, you know, uh, everything, everything else I wanted to see. Broadway, you know, I saw, but the the, the multi-purpose room was one area that I didn't see that I wanted to see, and hopefully I'll get to see that. And yeah, and then a few weeks after my my uh, time here, my tour, then I got the notification about this interview, you know, the oral history program, and I thought that that'd be awesome, you know. Uh, and you had a chance to either phone it in, Skype it in, or come in. I thought that's a great excuse to come in, come back. So you came here just for this so I interview? I just came here for this. You flew cross country? Yes, I did. Wow. We're, the, we're I'll impressed. be back. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be back. Oh, that's Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Okay, what happened then after the service? You, you got discharged. Did you go into the reserves then? For I was. Time? I did reserve. I did uh, at least two more years and then my one year inactive. But then I went to the A school. I went to the Defense Information School in Fort Benjamin Harrison, Indiana. Uh, became a journalist there. Did you pick that or did I picked that, yeah. I, I picked Why? that. Why? Writing. Okay. I like writing, you know. I like writing and I, and I picked that. Um, when I got out, then I stayed in Los Angeles and I tried to get into the movie business, you know, acting or things like that. So uh, at the writing, screenwriting and has always been a desire. And Did you try it? I've written. I've not submitted anything. You know, I've. I've. Some people have seen things, and nothing has gone very far. You know, but one 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 uh, screenplay that I I'd like to do is coming on board. You know, or joining the Navy, and the whole idea of Bob Hope as my inspiration. You know, and. Sounds like a good screenplay to it me. It would be a great, Leftera says, you know, you should have it titled, I did not sign up for this. <laughs> you know, but uh, it'll happen eventually. It's in the making, so it's one of those things that... Don't give up. No, never, never give up. So that did, after Dinfos, then, then I moved to Los Angeles and stayed there to try to get into the business. But during my, re my reserve time, I was stationed in Point Magoo, um, Ventura County, California on board the USS Gray uh, frigate. The USS Gray. G-R-A-Y. E-R-E-Y. E-Y. I e -Y. And uh, I was there a few months. You know, again, I do my one week in a month. Uh, my two-week time that I had to do for reserve uh, was used up with my A school, which was the Defense Information School. So yeah, that was the Navy stuff after the active duty. Uh, and uh, after you l finished your uh, your reserve duty, uh, what did you, what did you do then? I stayed in Los Angeles. I stayed in Los in Los Angeles. Tried to get into the, into acting, you know, and then I went back home. I'm originally from Phoenix. Uh, I went back home uh, when I was in Los Angeles. Uh, I started working at Sears. In fact, Sears is still with me. I'm still at Sears, so. Really? Yeah, I've been there 30 years already. So that's as long wow. as I've been out of the Navy. So I was reserve and Sears at the same time. So, uh, you know, I stayed with Sears. Sears is a great company, you know, very loyal to, to Sears. And uh, yeah, I was on board or I was uh, in the reserve and then went to work and just stayed working at Sears. And I've been with them from Los Angeles to California, North Carolina, New Jersey, 
you know, I, I lived in New Jersey for for a little bit back in '94. Where in New Jersey? Uh, Hasbrook Heights, in Bergen County, mm -hmm. Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey. Um, that was after my folks passed away, and then I just got away from home for a bit. Uh, but then I went home, and I've been there ever since. So other than going to Tucson uh, and moved to Tucson with Sears, you know, so every place that I've moved to has been a move with Sears, you know, along the way. And it's, a, it's been a great company to work for. And Were you in management for Sears? I'm in management now. Okay. Right, I'm in management now. I started as uh, sales mm -hmm. and then moved my way up to management. So, yeah. Okay, at the beginning you started to say how what impact the uh, Navy had on your life. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Coming in as a young man, it, the discipline, you know, I, I did go to school, finish school and like that, but there was still, you know, for me, I, I, I had big, bigger plans, you know, to do other things, to, to see, you know, different places. And joining the Navy was it, you know. I mean, it was more than I want to see Bob Hope. I want to see just, but it was traveling everywhere else. Uh, it was the um, centering, the discipline that it gave me, uh, meeting different people from all walks of life, you know, getting out of the box, as I would call it, getting out of the box. Uh, and it... Uh, it just uh, stayed with me, and it has to this day. You know how you treat others, you know, and to to do good, you know, to to do your best in your work uh, and respect others, and you know, show some pride and you know, dignity in how you carry yourself. And with the Navy and being on the battleship, that was part of who we were, you know, because we are on the battleship. We, we are the USS New Jersey. So, you know, part of that means dignity, you know, it means pride in, in who you are because we had a lot of pride in our ship. We took care of it, you know, and it took care of us. So you'd recommend it to young people? To I would now. <laughs> <laughs> I would now. I would say I wouldn't do it again, but I would, I would recommend it. In fact, I, a lot of the young folk that I talk to, you know, if they're uh, just wondering what to do or if they're in an area, you know, gray area, you know, consider the military, you know, consider the Navy, you know, you certainly will see a lot. I said, just know that when you get there, you know, what you want to do, you know, have, 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 a, have a focus, you know, what you want to get into, because it can happen, you know, you're, with the determination and the will, it can happen, absolutely. Okay, well, it, any other stories you wanted to tell us about the New Jersey that uh, you forgot to mention or didn't, didn't mention? I mean, the only one that comes to mind, Ron, is, is when they were doing the, the AF guns, the turrets, and we snuck on up topside, and then they, you know, they were getting ready to shoot the guns off, and we didn't have time to get back inside and do the hatch and everything else, so we just held on for dear life to one of the stairwells, and then the salvo alarms went off. It's, and we knew that after a certain time, then the guns go off. So <laughs> we both held on to the, st it was at star uh, port, and uh, we held on, and then it just blew, and it was like, felt like instant tan, you know? You just feel the heat, and it's like, okay, let's get inside and never do this again. <laughs> that was my one mischievous thing on board. Did you get caught? Didn't get caught. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now it's recorded. Now it's recorded. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna get it for that. They're gonna come after you. <laughs> All right, Armando. It's been a pleasure talking you, with Ron. you today. Thanks for inviting me. And thank you for your service first, thank and you. secondly for taking the time to fly all the way from Arizona right. to sit down with us and talk about your time in the service. Very well, we sir. appreciate that very much, and you're going to get a copy of this recording oh, nice. on, on DVD. Sweet, thank you. And, and a copy will also go to the Library of Congress and also to the New Jersey State Library. Nice. Thanks again. Thank you, sir.